Welcome back to Switched to Linux. So on this tutorial video, we're going to walk through how to set up our VirtualBox for an installation of a Linux distribution, and we will walk through the initial steps of installing that distribution. So we're going to start out by opening up our VirtualBox. Now you can use your generic Linux test machine, or you can create a new one. I'm going to go ahead and just create a new one. So we'll hit the new button up here. And then I'm actually going to install Linux Mint, which is my preferred replacement for a Windows machine. So I'm going to call this Linux Mint. And I'm going to put 18 because this is Linux Mint version 18. So here it's telling us that what it's done is it's pre-selected Linux under the type based on the what I typed in. And it actually picked Ubuntu. And you'll actually see that uh, Linux Mint is not an option in our list. Ubuntu 64 is, and it's actually picking Ubuntu because Linux Mint is based on the Ubuntu 64-bit shell. Well, at least the 64-bit Linux Mint is. So that's exactly what we want. We're going to go ahead and leave it there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase my system memory. Remember, I want to use half of my system memory, so I'm going to select 2048. And I'm going to hit next. Now, in this case, previously, we did not set up a virtual hard disk. This time we are going to. So I'm going to hit create a virtual hard disk now. Hit create. So there's a few different options. These are just uh, various compatibilities. Um, these are different types of machines. We'll take different types of virtual disks. We're just going to keep the top one, which is the default for this, this particular system. Hit the next. So it asks us if we want dynamically allocated or a fixed size. The difference is we, we're going to specify how big the disk should be, but the dynamically allocated means that it's not going to take that amount up now. It's only going to uh, use the data as we use it. So essentially, if we create a dynamically allocated disk at 20 gigabytes and we never use it, it will remain at zero until we actually turn it on. If we say fixed size, it's going to actually create our virtual disk at the 20 gigabytes and then it will, uh, you know, it will already be the same size and it will just the, add the data as it goes. Dynamically allocated is generally better unless you have a reason to do otherwise. It defaults at 8 gigabytes, which is generally not large enough to do much on a modern operating system. I'm going to increase this to 20 gigabytes and I'm going to hit create and now it gives us a uh, it gives us a virtual disk and it gives us the default as a SATA port here so you'll see where the virtual disk is now again remember that we want to change a few of our other settings that it does not give us the option to do so I'm going to make sure my Linux Mint 18 machine is highlighted in the list by being blue here you'll see the preview type and then I'm going to hit the settings box. And then remember, I want to come under the processors. I want to use half the CPU cores. Under display, I want to use more memory. In fact, this time we're actually, I'm just going to go ahead and use quite a bit more system memory than I, I usually would, just because I noticed it was running a little slower before. You know, up a little bit more there, enable the 3D acceleration. I think everything else should be pretty much set to go. So, yep, we'll go ahead and hit OK there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pop our Linux Mint uh, Cinnamon Edition 64 ISO into the virtual drive, and we're going to hit the Start button. So our machine's going to start up. And then what we're going to do here is actually install it this time. So on this one here, since we are going to be installing, there's going to be some periods of simply long waiting. I'll try and keep track of how long it actually takes us to install this, but we're going to cut the video in and out uh, just to uh, just to save the time. And, you know, I'm not going to talk a whole lot over top of it working on on the installs. So we're going to wait for this guy to, to boot up. In the meantime, while this is going, I'm going to hit my right control button and F to go into full screen mode. I'm going to wait for its initial startup menu option here. Looks like it is going to start us up into full screen, and then we'll have the option here when we get 
start it up to install it. Okay, so on this Linux distro here, you'll see that there's the install button. So we're just going to double click the install. And then here we have our screen here where we're going to start the installation. So it's going to default our language, uh, change that if it's not correct, hit the continue button. And then it wants to ask us, do we want to install third party software for graphics, Wi-Fi, Flash, MP3, and other media? So this one here, uh, Linux is a platform that it wants to maintain that, you know, that freedom. Some people will have a problem and only want to use open source drivers and stuff. For most users, this may or may not be super important. This is a personal preference, but I'm always going to say yes to this type of question. Uh, the only time I'm going to say no is if I'm not completely sure. In this case with Linux Mint, it simply means if we click this button, we're going to be able to watch YouTube videos. Uh, we're going to do, be able to do audio files without any problems. Everything should work pretty well out of the box in this case. So I'm going to select that, hit the continue button. Okay, so here it's uh, talking about the installation types here. So, um, so do we want to erase the disk and install Linux Mint? Do we want to encrypt the new Linux Mint? Do we want to uh, use logical volume management? And then something else will allow you to create your own partitions. We're just going to use Erase the Disk and Install Linux Mint because we just have a blank 20 gigabyte virtual disk in here. We're not going to in encrypt it in this case. Um, you'd use encryption if you want to do something you know, super secure, maybe banking type stuff or, or things like that. Uh, but it will slow down the computer a little bit and uh, we're not going to mess with any of that. So we're going to hit the Install Now button. See if there's anything else. Let me just double check here. Okay, so this is just giving us a detail of what it's going to do. Hit continue. Okay, so here we want to select uh, some options here. So where are you? It determines from our internet connection we're in the East Coast time zone, which is which is correct. I'm going to hit the continue button. And then here, what is the keyboard layout? It defaulted, you know. US English, so that's correct here. So we're going to hit that button there. And then now we want to do our name. So I'll just hit Tom up here, the computer name, Tom VirtualBox, username, it just picks Tom. And then here for choose a password, I'm just going to do Linux Mint. It tells me that's a weak password, but that's okay with me. I'm going to log in automatically. So encrypting your home folder is a different thing than encrypting the entire system. Encrypting the entire disk will make it a very secure system and it will allow you to uh, it will allow you to just make sure everything across the entire drive is encrypted. Encrypting a home folder will just encrypt the data that is within your particular user account and then you can have user accounts that are uh, that are encrypted and user accounts that are not encrypted. So we're going to pick the the not encrypted and so here's the step where we're copying files. So we're going to cut the video out at this time and then we will come back. Okay, so we are back. We have a, about a minute or so left to go. So I'm going to walk through the uh, settings over here real quick. You know, these are the uh, nice little introductory stuff you can read as the system is downloading, and uh, you might want to think about doing that. Basically, your uh, simple information on this one here, it talks about browsing the web. You know, they have the picture of Hulu here. Hulu does work out of the box uh, on Firefox on my Linux Mint 17 system, and I hear that with Linux Mint 8 and actually some new Firefox things that are coming out probably this quarter, um, pretty much all of the online streaming services should work out of the box on Linux. Um, there's a lot of music stuff. The audio codexes were installed with what we did earlier. So we have access to, um, to Banshee as the media player I prefer. If you're more of a podcast, iTunes, online music library stuff, you're going to want to install Rhythmbox. 
for videos, the X player is the lightweight uh, video player that comes pre-installed on Linux Mint. There's also VLC is a little heavier, also comes pre-installed, um, but it can play pretty much everything and is pre-packaged with its own codexes. If you're stuck on a Linux version and that you can't get videos to play and such, try VLC player, it'll probably work. Uh, with photo management, uh, GIMP and Inkscape are more professional video or uh, photo editing software, GIMP being more of a raster image editor and Inkscape a vector image editor. Your Pix is a, uh, the default just quick image viewer and thumbnail viewer installed in Linux. And then there's several other uh, programs out there like there is Skype, Thunderbird, um, Pigeon, and HexChat. Those are more chatting applications. I don't generally use the chatting applications, but they are useful. And then uh, the Linux Mint distro has the entire LibreOffice suite, so all the Office software that you would use. This is going to be completely compatible with Microsoft Office for, I'd say, a greater percentage of 90 or 95% of users. Super advanced Office functionality may not be in there, but that we're talking about levels that I've never used and I use uh, those systems professionally. Uh, Steam, if you're a gamer, Steam does have a lot of support and a lot of following in the Linux community. In fact, Steam is one of the fastest growing areas with even an entire distro built specifically for Steam. Uh, there's Dropbox and um, Minecraft. I don't use either of those. Blender is a open source uh, competitor of 3DS Max. I've used that. Uh, actually for my uh, intro clip, my six second intro clip at the beginning of my videos was actually built in Blender. You know, and then if you do need to run old Windows programs, you might try Wine. It allows you to run some older Windows programs inside of uh, Linux. Uh, and then of course VirtualBox, you can use that. And then we can customize the entire system with our settings. So we'll be able to play around with that a little bit. And it looks like the last one talks about the system updates. So there is uh, some built-in help files in there. So uh, this is just a real quick brief tour through, uh, through Linux Mint while we're installing it. So it's just doing a little bit of uh, uh, configuration. And then it's going to give us a prompt that we are essentially going to be done after this. Okay, so you can see that it is now finished, uh, so we can restart now or continue testing. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and hit, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the continue testing, and then I'm just going to immediately shut it down. I don't want to do the restart now in case the uh, ISO images still has to be in the disk drive. If I were doing this, uh, installing it actually off of an install media, then I would just go ahead and, and hit the restart, and as soon as I see the computer turn off, I'd just pop out the, uh, the drive there. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and shut down the machine. Verify that the ISO image is out, and then we're going to go ahead and reboot the machine real quick. Okay, so now we're going to verify the drive is empty, which it is hit the start again, and now our machine is going to load back up. Okay, so now we are started back up. The first time you run your Linux Mint, uh, it's going to give you this uh, this pop-up startup screen here. I'm actually just going to allow it to sh start the next time because the next uh, the next tutorial that we're going to do is to set this system up. The one thing I am going to do right now, though, I'm going to change the desktop image just so you see that when we change uh, an image, we make a cha setting change that it actually will preserve itself across the uh, uh, the shutdown, the restart. So I kind of like this particular image here. I think that looks pretty sweet. So we're going to choose that as our new background image for a while. And then what we're going to do is we're going to shut down our system. And then the next tutorial is going to walk through setting up your 
Linux Mint uh, install on your virtual box so you can hopefully use it as a more productive machine. So this has been Tom and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.